Hey guys, I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I want to welcome you back to my channel. Now in today's video, we are going to be flipping this hutch. And uh, just like the title says, hashtag I ruined it. That is a lot of times uh, the comments that we get when we are flipping items. Like, why would you paint it? It was beautiful before. You ruined it. And to be honest, I disagree. I think that in many cases by painting it and doing Doing different things to the piece it actually enhances the beauty and that's what I'm going to show you today so if uh, you want to also get your hands on a chunk of the rose chintz and that is what I used in the background of this beautiful hutch stick around to the end and I am gonna tell you how to get your hands on a piece of that now uh, if you haven't been to my channel before what you're gonna find is a lot of DIY furniture flips thrift flips thrift hauls really a day in the life of a small business owner. If that's the type of channel that you do like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell notification. That way every Monday and Friday when I do upload a video, you'll be notified. And if you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and let me know what your thoughts were on the hutch. Did I ruin it or did I make it better? For starters, here is a little glimpse of what this hutch looked like prior to me painting it. And it was beautiful. I loved it, but it needed something. It was just too dark, so we started off by painting it aviary. I applied two coats to the entire piece, and I let it dry really well. And then on the inside, I did end up using white swan, and I gave that like two and a half coats of paint inside both the cabinet, um, the hutch top and actually underneath as well and this industrial cart guys it got the coolest makeover wait till you see it in Friday's video you're gonna love it now if you remember I also had this bench and I did not like those hearts I definitely came up with a solution for that too I'm just giving you peeks of what I was doing all weekend, pricing and more pricing, washing items. It was just crazy chaos in my kitchen. And thank goodness I was all by myself over the whole weekend. So I got plenty done. Now that I had the two coats of aviary on the entire hutch and one coat on the inside of the white swan, I brought it outside and I thought it would dry so much quicker, which it did. Here I'm showing you how I'm going to lay the uh, rose chint paint inlay in there. So I'm going to, for starters, um, put on the second coat of paint. After I do that, then I'm going to show you how we're going to apply the paint inlay. Now that that's drying, I am going to take my sander and I am going to, rather than wet distress it, I'm just going to take my sander and just go around and distress all the edges. I had it on a very high speed and it kind of got out of control. It's much easier to control your sander when it is at a much slower speed. Um, plus me sanding and trying to videotape all at once uh, did not work the best. But um, I just went around and like I said, any of the raised edges, I just gave it a good scuff and I love how it all turned out. Lots of multitasking going on today um, and all weekend. So this piece I picked up a while ago, that's going to hold my business cards. I also found these two wood plates. I painted both white swan. I did two coats. I wet distressed them back. Now I'm going to apply big top to seal them. So that was a really fun find. And all these pieces I am going to have in one vignette so I want I you know I'm pulling them out I'm painting um, and I also decided that I wanted to inside the hutch that I am flipping today I wanted to have a bunch of different crocs in there and I pulled out the crockery stamp I used the air dry clay rolled that out and stamped an image of a bunch of different crockery stamps on there I used um 
quick and thick uh, to glue that on. And the cool thing I discovered was that DIY's Sandy Blonde is basically the exact color of the Crocs. So they all blend it so well. And then I took some white wax, some dark wax and white wax, and I just enhanced all the features on these different Crocs. I absolutely love how they turned out. Here is what it looks like with the dark wax and the white wax, and I love it. I think uh, the dark wax just enhanced the entire, you know, the actual image, and then the white wax just brought out a lot more of the detail as well and lightened it up. So the next step is we are clear coating this entire piece uh, with poly, and I normally would have used Big Top and honestly I have become so used to Big Top. I love how it you know applies but I had some poly left over that I wanted to use so I um, just went ahead and used the Minwax poly on here and I applied a real nice even layer to the entire piece and I love, oh gosh, I just love this aviary, guys. It's so pretty. Um, it is really one of my favorite colors of DIY, and it's so springy. So now that the inside is dry, we are going to take the paint inlay rose chintz, and we are going to cut it down. So uh, the pack itself comes with eight sheets, and to complete the project, I actually needed three sheets for each of the um, shelves. I laid them down in there, and then I had to cut them to size. Uh, so it actually took basically three on each of them, and here you can see how I cut it down. Now we're going to go ahead and we are going to start applying it. So anytime you apply a paint inlay, the first step is you're going to want to have your second coat of a chalk style or a clay style paint. And you're just gonna want a nice even layer of that. And that's what I'm doing here, just applying a nice even layer. And then once I get that even layer of paint done down, then we're going to take the paint inlay, which is flopping in the wind right there, and we're gonna lay that down next. I'm just going to line up that corner. I'm going to start on one side and I'm just going to rub it initially with my hand. Then I'm going to go back and take my misting bottle and I'm going to mist the entire paint inlay to dampen it. I don't want it too watered down, just enough that it's like saturated. And then I'm going to take my brayer uh, that I have from IOD and I am going to basically brayer over the entire piece and that's really going to embed that paint inlay into that wet paint. Uh, it was a little bit di more difficult to get in on the very edges so I just took my finger and I rubbed around the entire edge and then I'm going to continue on and again add more paint for the next piece and again, just a real nice even layer of paint. And then we're gonna go in and apply the second paint inlay to that. Uh, but it's really as simple as that, uh, just to, um, and if there's an area where you notice like the, the paper on the paint inlay does not have enough water or moisture, just mist it a little bit more and just make sure the entire piece is nice and flat and um, that brayer really helps embed that. So now we're laying down that second piece and the key here is to really line up the actual images and then as you're lying it once it's lined up then I just take my hand and I rub it all the way down so it does not get any wrinkles and um, once it's all laid down like that then I come in and I mist it again and I do the exact same thing over I use my brayer to brayer it and just get it all um, you know any of the wrinkles out or any of the air bubbles out and then really embed that into the wet paint 
uh, such a simple, simple process. Um, I know that many um, can feel very intimidated by the process, but it really is easy. And once you um, try it out, uh, do just like a little, even like a sample area, and you're going to see how easy it is to work with this. So there you have it. I have all three sheets down. Now the key here is you can see that it is all wet and we're gonna let that dry. So we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna continue on with the next two shelves and then we're completely finished. Um, so just like that, um, with the snap of my fingers, I had all three shelves finished. Um, by the time I got the second and third one done, you can see the first one that we completed together is almost dry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let all of them dry and then we're going to come back and we are going to remove the paint inlay paper and it's super simple. So here you can see the paint inlay paper is completely dry. So it didn't look as vibrant as it had in the previous, uh, previous video. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna just mist it with our spray bottle and just a nice even layer. Um, you don't want too much water running down. That paper really does absorb it. And then I'm gonna start in the corner. I'm gonna take um, my finger and I'm going to pull it and then you can see there was just a couple spots that needed a little bit more water. And I'm going to just start pulling it back one by one and just little by little. And there you have it. Oh my gosh, isn't it beautiful? Every time I do this, I am like just amazed how beautiful that looks. Now, the second thing I want to let you guys know is definitely keep those papers with a paint inlay, you can use them up to two to three more times. So what I did is I just set those aside and I'm gonna let them dry. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to put them back in the package so that they're all together so I can use them a second time. And I'm just gonna go through and um, do the same thing like I did on the first piece. Just mist it all, get it started and then pull back and you can see how beautiful the whole piece looks. And I did read a comment on somebody else's page too that they were, you know, like they wanted the image to be just perfect. And honestly, if it's not as perfect, I think it looks better because it looks more natural. Um, so yes, there it's a really nice clean image, but it also has a bit of distressing because the paint inlays, they're, they don't all go perfect. So I really like that, that look. Here is the finished product and I love how it turned out. Now um, with the paint inlay, you do want to seal it. So just like um, any type of paint, such as the, the chalk style or clay style paint can be reactivated, so can the paint inlays. They can reactivate. So what I do is I actually load my brush up full of like the poly or whatever type of clear coat and I'm not gonna do a lot of rubbing. I am just gonna load up my brush, give it a good swipe, and I am going to apply a nice even layer of clear coat. When you um, go over it multiple times, I've heard other people have had problems with it where it had actually um, smeared. So by doing it the way that I have been doing, I have had no problems. So I just, uh, like I said, load up my clear coat on my brush and give it a good swipe and I've had no issues with the smearing. I am going to just uh, apply the poly throughout the, on the entire shelf, and it is finished. And I absolutely love how the IOD Rose Chintz looks with that aviary.
So what did you guys all think? Did I ruin it or did I make it better? Honestly, I think I made it a whole lot better. I knew the moment that I chose aviary that I was going to use the rose chintz paint inlay as well. Now for you to get a sample of the rose chintz paint inlay, you all you have to do is the next 16 people that place an order on my website will get a sample. So each pack comes with eight sheets and I'm going to cut those eight sheets in half and I am going to give 16 people uh, the paint inlay in their order. So if you planned on placing an order, you're going to get a sample of the Rose Chins paint inlay to play around with like I did today. So in Friday's video, I'm back to flipping. Uh, I am really down to the wire. Like on last Friday, I'm like, oh, I have three weeks till the um, antique acres, plenty of time. And then I really like broke it down. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have like two weeks guys. And I am starting to panic. So I am wrapping stuff up. I wanted to get this done. I am going to bring you along to, I'm going to uh, do some tables. I have some chairs. There's different painting techniques. There's a bunch of stuff. I should have taped more this past weekend, but I was just in a groove and I was just cranking the stuff out. I got a lot accomplished. Um, pricing, washing things up, flipping, just, you know, you name it, I was doing it. So I feel like I got a lot accomplished this um, past weekend. I have a lot to do this week and I'm going to bring you guys along on Friday to show you a lot more. Will you have yourself a great week and we will see you on Friday. One last thing, I did have a comment that said, why do you tape outside? Well, sometimes I do that. Like the hutch I have finished out here and I wanted to do my intro and outro right in front of it. Unfortunately, when cars go by, it just sounds magnified. So I'm sorry, but that's what you get with me. Um, I'm just, you know, I try to make things as simple as possible. I could have probably hauled it all the way back in the house, but I am creating like an area in my garage where all the finished products are. So you guys have a great week and we'll see you Friday. Bye. Bye.